Seattle hopes to become the world's first climate neutral city. To achieve this goal, the city must account for and reduce the carbon footprint of everything it does, from transportation to trash, buildings to office paper, e-waste to wastewater, for more than half a million people. Hello, my name is Richard Conlin, President of the Seattle City Council. Here are my blog notes posted December 16, 2010. Moving from a carbon-based economy to a carbon-neutral economy requires a sophisticated array of strategies. There is no magic bullet, so I will draw from several different strategies to paint a picture of what I see as the six major options. This strategy is the most readily accessible and builds on many technologies that we already have experience with. It involves steps like insulating buildings and improving the mileage performance of these vehicles. There is no reason we can't cut vehicle carbon emissions in half and save money too. Improving efficiency necessarily involves design improvements, but at some point a threshold is crossed, requiring redesign of both the component part and the system it operates in. Shifting to electric cars is an example. While the vehicle operations may dramatically reduce emissions, it is also necessary to set up charging stations and generate the needed electricity from renewable sources. The carbon benefits would be enormous. Shifting to bicycles, walking, and public transit will greatly reduce carbon emissions, although not eliminate them, especially the embedded carbon in developing and operating the transit systems themselves. Telecommuting generates much less carbon than actually going to a workplace and developing compact communities where employment, housing, shopping, and recreation can be accessed without the need for cars can be very effective. Redesigning whole systems is the most challenging strategy, but this kind of rethinking will be necessary. Here's a good example. The food system generates somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of America's carbon emissions. Our food travels an average of 1,500 miles from farm to fork. Then there's the processing, storage, marketing, and shopping involved, plus the embedded carbon in each element of this system. Growing local foods can reduce a whole array of emissions. To reach carbon neutrality, we will need to find as many ways as possible to take carbon out of the atmosphere. There are several very practical sequestration strategies involving healthier soils, better agricultural practices, and forest restoration programs. The practice of carbon offsets involves buying someone else's carbon reduction in order to balance the carbon we are generating. But unless this truly involves buying actual sequestration projects, offsets cannot be part of a long-range carbon neutrality strategy. There you have a quick summary of the tools we have available to us. Before digging into the details of how to use them, my next blog post will focus on adaptation what we must do to address the fact that climate change is already happening. Catch my blog at conlin.seattle.gov. <laughs>